India's ancient UFO legends, 6,000 year old flying machines called the Vimanas, what powered them? According to ancient Indian history, one of the most extensive on the planet, their ancient sacred texts called the Vedas speak of incredible flying ships or flying shields that visited our planet over 6,000 years ago. In other words, their Vedas talk about extraterrestrial flying objects that visited us, our Earth that is, over 6,000 years ago. So this reminds us of mythology from various countries, whether it's the Hopi Indian legends of the Anu who visited us, or the Greek, ancient Greek, quote unquote, Olympian gods, or the Atlantean extraterrestrials, now, throughout history, many common myths and legends mention incredible flying machines and how ancient people traveled great distances through the air, the flying carpets of ancient Arabia, even that there is even said that King Solomon had a flying carpet, if you could believe that, Ezekiel's wheel, Solomon's ability to travel from one place to another, and the magical chariots or vimana mentioned in ancient India, and even Chinese texts had such flying objects. According to ancient Indian history, one of the most extensive on the planet, their ancient sacred texts called the Vedas speak of amazing flying ships that visited our planet over 6,000 6, years ago. While there are many who oppose the existence of such Vimanas, millions of people around the world are concerned that thousands of years ago, ancient mankind was in fact visited by Incredible flying machines piloted by the quote-unquote gods. And with the help of the Vimana, ancient astronauts visited different places on our planet with ease, spreading knowledge and wealth among ancient primitive civilizations. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Reference to the ancient Vimana can be found in the Mahabharata, which is one of the two major Sanskrit epics of ancient India. Quote, at Rama's behest, the magnificent chariot rose up to a mountain of cloud with a tremendous din. Another passage reads, Biha flew with his vimana on an enormous ray, which was as brilliant as the sun and made a noise like the thunder of a storm. In the ancient Vimanka Shastra, a science of aeronautics, there is a description of a vimana, quote, an apparatus which can go by its own force from one place to a place or globe to globe. In other words, flying around on Earth and also from our planet to another planet. Dr. Raghava points out, the text's revelations become even more astounding. 31 parts of which the machine consists are described, including the phot photographing mirror underneath. So it even had a camera to photograph what it was flying over. I wonder if the Nazca lines had anything to do with such craft. Now the text also enumerates 16 kinds of metal that are needed to construct the flying vehicle. Metals suitable, Lighar 16 kinds, but only three of them are known to us today. The rest remain untranslatable. Another authority who agrees with Dr. Raghavan's Interpretations is Dr. A. V. Krishna Murthy, Professor of Aeronautics at the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. He says, it's true, Dr. Krishna Murthy says, that the ancient Indian Vedas and other texts refer to aeronautics, spaceships, flying machines, ancient astronauts. A study of the Sanskrit texts has convinced me that ancient India did know the secret of building flying machines and that those machines were patterned after spaceships coming from other planets. In other words, they, they were used uh, reverse engineering to create their own spaceships 
from patterns of other spaceships from other planets. However, what fueled these ancient Vimana? The Vaimanika Sastra, an early 20th century Sanskrit text on aerospace technology, makes a claim that the Vimanas mentioned in ancient Sanskrit epics were advanced aerodynamic flying machines, similar to a rocket capable of interplanetary flight as backed up by the ancient alien theory. Revealed in 1952 by G.R. Joyce, the text contains 3,000 slokas in eight chapters, which Shastri claimed was physically delivered to him by the ancient Hindu sage Bharad Vaja. The propulsion of the Vimanas, according to Kanjilal, 1985, is by a, quote, mercury vortex engines, end quote, a concept similar to electric propulsion. However, after many people argue that a far greater, more accessible and free power source was available to the ancient Vimana craft. It's noteworthy to mention that a couple of years ago, Chinese researchers discovered ancient Sanskrit documents in Lhasa, Tibet, dating back thousands of years. The ancient texts were sent to the University of Chandigarh for translation, and the results were shocking. According to Dr. Ruth Reina, the translated texts allegedly are blueprints for the construction of interstellar spaceships. According to the translated documents, the propulsion system designed for the spaceship was based on anti-gravitational technology and based on a system analogous to that of La Gima, the unknown power of the ego that exists in man's psychological makeup. Can you imagine? So the the propulsion system for these anti-gravity craft were based on a system analogous to the Lagima, the power of the ego in man's character, a centrifugal force strong enough to counteract all gravitational pull. Interestingly, according to Hindu yogis, the mysterious Lagima force is what enables people to levitate. That's amazing. Dr. Reina explained that on board these machines, which were called Astras, the builders of the crafts could have sent a detachment of men to any planet. The manuscripts, however, do not mention how interplanetary communication was achieved, but they do mention a trip from Earth to the Moon, though it's unclear whether the trip was just planned or actually carried out. However, one of the great Indian epics the Ramayana does have a highly detailed story in it of a trip to the moon on a Vimana or an Astra, and in fact details a battle on the moon with an Asvin or Atlantean airship. Where have we heard that before? We've heard that in uh, ancient Greek texts. We have heard, heard that in uh, the, uh, well, uh, I can't remember if we heard that in the Emerald Tablets, but we've heard that in other legends having to do with something having to do with Venus and the Moon and against the Earth. Now, Indian scientists were extremely reserved about the value of these documents, but became less so when the Chinese announced that certain parts of the information were being studied for inclusion in their space program. But can we actually reverse engineer ancient technology? Well, it depends on what you think is possible. Interestingly, in the Sanskrit Samarangana, Sut Radhara, it is written, quote, Strong and durable must be the body of the Vimana be made, like a great flying bird of light material. Inside, one must put the mercury engine with its iron heating apparatus underneath. By means of the power latent in the mercury which sets the driving whirlwind in motion, a man sitting inside may travel a great distance in the sky. The movements of the Vimana are such that it can vertically ascend, vertically descend, move slanting forward and backwards. With the help of the machines, human beings can fly in the air, and heavenly beings can come down to earth. What do they mean by heavenly beings? Interestingly, the law of the Babylonians, the Hakatha, unambiguously states this. The privilege of operating a flying machine is great. The knowledge of flight is among the most ancient of our inheritances, a gift from those from upon high. 
we received it from them as a man means of saving many lives. The Pushpaka Vimana was a gigantic plane the size of a large city, entirely capable of holding unlimited numbers of people. Three flying cities were made for and were used by the demons. One was in a stationary orbit in the sky, another moving in the sky, and one was permanently stationed on the ground. These were docked like modern spaceships in the sky and at a fixed latitude longitude. Shiva's arrow obviously referred to a blazing missile fired from a satellite specially built for the purpose. Vestiges of one-time pr uh, prosperous civilizations destroyed in battles flickered through these legends. This is what Professor D.K. Kan Ji Lao's observations of the Marcia Purana says. Now, harnessing Earth's natural energy. But is it possible that the ancient Vimanas were built so that they could access the planet's natural energy? What if thousands of years ago, ancient flying machines used Earth's natural energy to charge and reload? Is it possible that ancient monuments like pyramids were in fact giant energy transmitters that fueled the ancient Vimana? Interestingly, stone-like metal could be charged and it's able to carry out electrical charges. What if ancient sites on Earth were specifically placed on so-called magnetic vortices or electrical ley lines to be charged, that is? What if there is a far greater meaning to the countless numbers of ancient Indian pyramids, monoliths, megalithic statues, steles, obelisks, and totems? And what if all of these structures, not only from ancient India, but different civilizations around the world, had a special scientific purpose to transmit vast amounts of energy? Many researchers argue that intricate ancient stonework attributed to the Incas, Egyptians, East Indians, Maya, and other ancient civilizations has a specific purpose and was not only aesthetic in nature. It's noteworthy to mention that many consider the Great Pyramid of Giza as one of the best examples of ancient energy machines. It was a Tesla-like power plant created a thousand years ago, many believe. It was a huge ancient structure that was capable of using the Earth's natural properties in order to create or produce a great amount of energy. This energy is believed to have been used by the ancient Egyptians and other cultures such as the ancient Maya, and other cultures around the globe for millennia. This theory, however, has been firmly rejected by mainstream researchers. So if we approach the history of ancient civilizations from another perspective, we'll encounter that ancient civilizations around the globe were in fact extremely sophisticated and used advanced technologies thousands of years ago before mainstream science reinvented them. And they used advanced technologies we don't even know of today. These advanced technologies were present in ancient Egypt, ancient Sumer in the North, South, Central America. Electricity, electrochemistry, electromagnetic technology, metallurgy, advanced engineering, including hydrogeology, chemistry, physics, and advanced forms of mathematics and astronomy were all used thousands of years ago to great extents. This is by Ancient Code on Humans Are Free. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.